So let's talk for a few minutes about the transition from Comp 1 to Comp 2. What are the differences that you can expect in this semester? Well, if I were to ask you to write an essay about Google, you would probably begin to think, what do I Google? What have been my most recent searches? And you might come up with some answers like uh, lyrics to songs, right? We all hear those songs and we think, okay, what in the world was he just saying or she just saying? Surely it's not what I thought, right? So we Google those lyrics to songs. Maybe you look for recipes. What's the latest butterscotch muffin rage? And you'll look up those recipes. Or when the next Marvel movie is coming out and you look for entertainment venues and ways to spend your Friday and Saturday evenings, right? So maybe that's what you've used your Google for. Now, if we're going to write this and turn this into an essay, what might it look like in Comp 1? Well, be a pretty easy essay to write. We might start with a fun introduction about being dependent on Google, how much we use it on a daily basis, and then we might write a paragraph about each one of these, a paragraph about lyrics to songs, a paragraph about recipes, and a paragraph about uh, movies that are coming out, the latest movies. We would write our information in first person, so we would tell about our own search and our personal, uh, our personal search for information, right? And then we would finish it with a conclusion about the reoccurring nightmare of life without Google. So this is what a Comp 1 essay would look like. But now, we are switching to Comp 2, and things are going to change. So I want you to keep in mind three things as we make this transition from Comp 1 to Comp 2. First of all, Comp 2 is moving from feelings to facts. It's no longer important what I think or what I feel or what I believe because I'm switching now to third person. Okay, no longer will I use pronouns like me or I or, or us or we. I can't even use you. I can't speak in second person. I have to speak in third person as an objective observer or researcher. Okay, so that's the first transition that we're going to make. What would that look like in our Google essay? Well, now if we're writing a research, a Comp 2 paper about Google, we're going to turn to Google. We're going to begin to search for facts. Maybe we could even type in and search for interesting facts about Google and learn that it started off as two guys working on a college project, a research project. And in fact, they, they called their project Project Backrub. Aren't you glad they changed that title? I'd hate to say, hey, can you just back rub that? Right? No, we like Google much better. You might also learn uh, that the first Google computer was made from Legos. So you can find some interesting information about the background of Google. You might also Google what did people look for last year? What were Google searches centered around? And that could be an interesting question to answer. We might see if there are some expected Google trends for the upcoming years. Are there some new apps coming out? And has Google really benefited society? Maybe we could write a paragraph or two about uh, how people have actually saved individuals' lives by Googling CPR or Googling the Heimlich Maneuver. So Google has benefited society in more ways than just telling us which Marvel movie is coming out next, right? So now you can see that we have moved away from the feelings of our Comp 1 essay, and we're now focused on the facts of our Comp 2 research paper. I like to think of it as still an essay. It just happens to be an essay, a research-based essay. And that's exactly what we will be writing. We will also be looking for credible sources. Every time we use a, a source in our paper, we need to make sure that it is credible, that it, that it contains valid information. So we're going to put it to the ABCD test. First of all, see who wrote this thing. Do they seem to be a qualified individual to write on this topic? Have they written other articles on this topic? Are they associated with an organization that would know something about this topic? Note that Wikipedia is not a credible source because anyone can get online and add and delete information. That's why a lot of times you'll see a little bar that pops up and says citation needed. All right, so what Wikipedia cannot be used in your research. Next, look for bias. Who supports and publishes this website? It could be that you're looking at a website that's going to have tainted information. It's going to be biased one way or another. Make sure you are relaying information that, that truly is credible. 
Look at the currency. In other words, check the date. When was this written? It's not that you can't use an article from 1995 on Google when it first began, but you certainly wouldn't want to stop there. You want to bring Google into uh, the 21st century. And then check domain. What type of domain is this website registered as? Is it a .edu or a .gov? Those are very credible sources. Maybe a .org. .com? .com stands for commercial. So it's probably a little biased. It's commercial means it's selling a thought or a product. So it's a, probably a little more biased than your others would be. Finally, I finished by asking myself, is this resource as good as one that I could find on the library database? I'm going to teach you how to use the library database uh, in, in the next few exercises. But just know that anything that appears in the library database has already been checked for credibility. So we know it's credible and you will learn it's already produ uh, produced a citation for us. Now, what do I mean by citations? Well, the next part of Comp 2 is that we are going to have to cite our sources because we're not just using our opinion. We are now relying on facts and information. We have to tell where we got that information. And we'll do that in two ways. Through parenthetical citations, you'll notice on the left-hand side, on the very last line, you see a, in parentheses the name Besthoff. That just tells my reader, hey, I did not come up with this information. I got it from somebody named Besthoff. Okay, it's just a very quick giving of credit right there in my text. Sometimes they're called in-text citations or parenthetical citations. We will also compose a works cited page. That's what you see on the right hand side of your screen. This is where um, I'm going to give more information about the source that I used. So that if my reader says, best off, that sounds like a great source. I'm going to go see where that came from and look it up on my own. Then they can go to my works cited page and access any of my resources. So comp two, again, we're moving to facts and we're going to cite those facts. And finally, we're going to employ more critical thinking. This is going to make our paper a little lengthier than an essay. It's going to be a, time, a, a tad bit more time consuming as we get, begin to pull all of this information together because it's not a book report. It's not a summary of an article. It's a collaboration of multiple sources. So I'm going to have to look in several places and then bring together the best of what I found and what I've discovered. You're probably beginning to realize that good research begins with good questions. It's all about asking the right questions. You become, in a sense, an investigator. You say, I don't know, this whole research thing sounds a little tough to me. Uh, you guys are researchers and you just don't know it. You investigate things every day. For instance, you talk to your friends and you ask, hey, where's the cheapest gas in town? I need to fill up, where's the cheapest gas? Maybe you ask, where's the best barbecue? Right? If I'm in a new town, I might Google and ask, where's the best restaurant to eat? Right? And I guarantee you that you guys have probably looked to see when fall break is. You had to do a little research to discover the answer to that question. So you actually investigate all the time. We conduct research on a daily basis to gain more information about subjects we are interested in or that we have a need to know more about. So don't be intimidated by COP2. Don't be intimidated by research. We can do this. So what I'd like for you to do next is to read uh, in your textbook, your little seagull, the chapter on pages 90 through 105 called Doing Research and Evaluating Sources. And here you will find a little more information, research basics that will be beneficial as we begin our journey together. I've also created a 10 question quiz for you on Blackboard just to make sure that you've comprehended what you've learned in that chapter. Enjoy learning about research and I'll talk to you more soon.